Welcome back, my friends, to another exciting Lord Duckman production. I'm back today with my KT196 go-kart. In particular, this is my Predator 301 engine. This made the weak spot on the Colding KT196 very, very evident. The weak spot is right here in the jack shaft mount. It only attaches in one point to one of these one inch square tubes right here. And what happens is the engine pulls on this thing and it twists the square tube. In addition to that, the other side connects to the axle and the axle is extremely solid and stationary so it pulls against that and it draws itself down. So this whole thing is forced to twist. And even though I fixed it in the last video and I welded it on straight, it continued to twist which caused my chains to lose tension constantly. I don't think I even got 15, 20 minutes out of that car before I started to have chain issues. And we're talking the chain was popping off, it's eating sprockets, the teeth on this thing are a little chewed up. Still good, but a little chewed up. But what we're gonna do today is we're gonna knock this stupid jack shaft barrel off of here. This thing's gonna go away. And then we're gonna use some pillow bearings. And what we'll use is a 5 8 inch keyed shaft, which will go through the pillow bearings. We're gonna use two pillow bearings. And we're gonna mount them on either side so that way both rails take the, the full brunt so it can't just twist one, it's gonna be forced to pull against them both. And I don't think that'll be a problem anymore, but this, this is a problem with stock KT196s, but I would say that the bigger engine with the additional torque that it had probably put a little more force on this piece than it would have otherwise. And well, it exacerbated the problem. That's probably the best way to put it. So don't get caught exacerbating by your parents, otherwise you're gonna end up in some big trouble. Anyways, that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna knock this thing off of here. I already started beating on it. And I already started um, running a <laughs> saw through it. So it's already loose. It might even come off with just a little bit of, yeah, there it is. I knew. That's good. And we'll come in here with a grinder. We're gonna clean this up. And then we're gonna use some riv nuts. These here are riv nuts. And these are fantastic. I've talked about these just earlier this week in one of my Volkswagen videos. And what we're going to do is we'll drill a hole in here, we'll attach this in there, and then we use a tool that pulls it together just like a pop rivet. And what it does is it creates a threaded nut, which allows me to thread in a bolt. And these are actually rib nuts that are already in place. So anyways, with that said, we'll get this thing all mounted, all set up like new, better than new in fact, because this thing's going to have a lot more strength than it ever did before. And uh, we'll put the engine back in and hopefully we have the car running again for the weekend. So that way I can go hang out with David. <laughs> so I'm really excited to get over to Rancho 302 Me's house. We had about two weeks with no go-karts because well, I had to order up parts and I had to come up with a plan as to how I was gonna make this work. But I think we got it figured out today. So licky, likey, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to pluck the dingle bellies so you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out DougShit.net for all my different social media links. And we'll be back after we have a moment for our sponsor, the HIPAA Store. Yes, my friends, the HIPAA Store. The HIPAA Store is a company that sells parts for lawnmowers, chainsaws, and other outdoor power equipment, and even has some parts for go-karts. And right now, the HIPAA Store is running a big $9.90 two for sale. You get one item that's already on sale for $9.90, and you get the second one free. This is an awesome sale, and with grass cutting season upon us, you better get outside and check your mowers. Also, if you live in a coastal region, keep in mind that May 1st begins the 2023 hurricane season. Check your generators and chainsaws, and make sure they're fully out operational because it's better to be prepared than to be surprised. The HIPAA store has what you need to get your machines running tip top. So please check out the HIPAA store from my affiliate links down below in the video description because when you support the HIPAA store you're also supporting the production of my YouTube videos. So special thanks again to the HIPAA store for sponsoring this video. And thanks to everyone that's watching. Please linky likey comment and subscribe and we'll be back right after that intro. <laughs> Alright, well, I saved you guys from all of the boring, grinding, noisy stuff right here. So this is all ground down. I guess I could touch it up a little bit better, but it's in a place where it's not an obstacle anymore. This is going to go on here like this. And, you know, which side was the one with the sprocket? This side is. This is the side that faces back, so I want the grease zerks to face backwards, so this is actually going to be right. So I'll put these on here like this. That's going to be, and I'm not going to tighten it up that much. I did select slightly smaller bolts, so that way I have a little bit of play, so I can play with alignment. 
And these pillow bearings I selected also, the bearing is rounded on the inside of here, so if I put the shaft in and let's say I pull it to one side, you see how it cocks off to one side? Nothing like cocking off, but uh, yeah, it allows it to cock. So if for some reason your bearings are a little off center, or you don't have your pillow bearings in absolute alignment, it will make up for that. And <laughs> it's just a nice feature. All right, so we'll put this one in here. This one in here, just like that. Let's figure out approximately where we're gonna go here. Now that just aligned my bearings as I was just talking about, so I'll give it a little tap. A little love tap. Okay, here's how the shaft's gonna be set up. Now what I need to do here, is I also need to get the sprocket and the carrier off of the shaft, which is actually all machined into one component. So what I'll probably do is I'll cut it off here, I'll drill through it, put it on the end of the shaft, and then we'll weld it on. The other side we don't need anything. You think you might need a cap or something to hold it on, but that's not necessary. There's actually set screws in here that will hold these things together. And then I have a sprocket that I'll put in here. And this is not the sprocket we're going to use. I'm actually waiting for it to show up. It'll probably be here tomorrow. But when you guys are watching this, it's all going to be one video, so you're not going to see any of the difference here. But nonetheless, this will go in between, and then the sprocket will go somewhere in between there. And this is the one that seems to fit the best on this shaft. And we're going to use a big keyway this time. Before it was just a little short one and it would shear off every time. So we're going to use, you know, uh, an inch or more, maybe an inch and a half of this keyway. The more you use, the less likely it is to shear off. So that's how we'll set that up. And this sprocket that I have actually will have set screws in it also so I can play with it to set the alignment. That also means, because everything is in set screws here, I can loosen the screws in these and I can push the shaft back and forth. So for the gear that's on the end here, or sprocket I should say, I can actually fix the alignment on that just the same. But this looks good, nice and square. I'll approximate where this is gonna be because of course I have the ability to play with these, figure out exactly where about I want it. And I think it's gonna go right about there. So let's make a mark right there. Make one in here. I'm doing this all by hand and not with regular measurements on purpose because I can play with the alignment on all this stuff. Okay, you yeah. know, right here, I'm gonna put a punch. That's where we're gonna drill. And right here also, that looks good and centered. Okay, we'll take these bolts back out of this thing, throw it in the drill press. out them holes and then we'll come back and we'll install a couple of riv nuts here. Yeah, it should go right in there. I'm putting these two a little closer together than I did on the other two because I noticed when I put the riv nuts on the inside of these and these have a little like a, a indentation, it's a little recessed, the riv nuts fit better when they're a little closer together. This one, it didn't have as much play. This one's going to have a lot more play so I can make a lot more adjustment on that end and that's the end that it's important on because that's the end that's closest to the sprocket. So that's where I'll need my alignment, should I need to make an adjustment on it. Okay, the drill bit we're gonna use is actually roughly the same diameter as the riv nut. So when you put these in, yeah, that's what you do. You just drill it out to pretty much exactly the same diameter. Then you come out here and get it in there just like that, and then you whack it with a hammer, bang! <laughs> Seriously, you just kind of tap it into place, but we'll come back to that in just a second. Let's get these holes drilled and we'll be right back. All right, right here we got our riv nut. We're going to place it in the hole we drilled. The hole is the same size as the drill bit, so it's going to be a little snug. So I like to just tap it in there. Once it goes, it goes and it's set. Then you take your riv nut tool your riveting gun, if you will, and this is already set up for this size thread, which I think is 5 16 so I don't remember. Either way, it's irrelevant. Pull these back, and you just thread it in. And this is where a lot of people make mistakes on this thing, because if you pull the tool too hard, you will break it. You gotta go just enough that it pulls the rib nut tight. I 
think that got it. You'll feel it when it gives and then it gets so tight that that uh, it doesn't go anymore. There it is. So now we've got a nut in there that we can thread a bolt into. That's it. We'll do the same thing down here. Oop, that one went right in. I hope that's not going to be an issue. Yeah, I guess we'll find out when it starts to uh, crimp using the tool. We'll know. Put that in there. I guess the drill bit went a little wampus when I was cutting. And up again. A little more. That's it. Went tight. And these things, as I said, you do not force them because you will blow the tool out. These tools are, well, they're Chinese made. They're cheap. That's it. Rib nuts tight. No, it actually did snug up, so we're good. These are set up here. Nuts and bolts. All looks good. There they are. These rib nuts, as I said, are awesome. We can get this bolt put in. This bolt put in. You know, I'm doing it backwards. Doing it backwards. Dark man, don't do it backwards. Okay, this has to go this way. Because as I said, the grease zerks need to face the rear, and this smaller section back here is where the rear end is at. So, should I ever have to grease these things, it's going to be nice to have them pointing in the correct direction that they're easy to get to. Thinking ahead about this stuff, guys. I mean, it really doesn't matter which way you put them, but as I said, if you're caring about future upgrades or repairs and this stuff actually might be kind of important to you I guess I don't need these goggles anymore I've had them on since I've been drilling that's it oh all right our shaft should go in here like so good. When I tighten these down, the bearings will self-center. Crap. Also, tightening these bolts is what f does the final crimping on the rib nuts, so that's now in there, and this is turning properly. Feels a little stiff. Something is bound up a little bit. Probably just tap the uh, shaft a little bit get the bearings to align. Yeah, that's a lot better. Yeah, it's a lot better. That was part of the issue there. Okay. Anyway, pop this one back. Oh. <coughs> go. Pull him back off of there. Let go. Oh, you know what? I can't. Remember those little recessed bottoms that are on the pillow bearings? Well, it's getting caught on the rib nuts because they're not flush with the surface, so I can't pull it off. I actually have to lift it up to pull it off. That's it. These rib nuts are cause these things to be captive. Nice feature. I mean, <laughs> not really intended to be a feature, but it is a feature. Okay, we're going to have one little problem here that I'm seeing, and that's that the mounting plate adapter that I put on here is going to come through here, and there's going to be a nut on it. And not going to clear that properly. I may have to come in here and just grind out a little bit here on the bottom of this pillow bearing to make it fit properly over that nut. So, the nut's not very big, but I probably have to take out about an eighth of an inch or so just to make sure that I can tighten that nut, then put the pillow bearing over it and make it fit. This side already has not a rib nut, but it's a welded in captive nut. And I did that on purpose, but I can't do the same on this side because that one will not clear the engine should I attempt to do that. So that's not going to be an option. <laughs> Boomer's getting chased by girls. <laughs> you guys missed that. Sorry, it's not on camera. Boomer was getting chased by chicken girls. Now he's chasing chicken girls. Boomer. Ooh, a little interspecies stuff going on there, buddy. <laughs> what are you doing, cheeky? She just came over here. I don't know if you saw her, but she came by just a second. Anyway, all right, well, we've got captive nuts in there. We're going to grind out the bottom of one of these pillow bearings just a little bit. I don't want to take too much off of it because I will weaken overall this, this casting. And I don't think that's a good idea. So 
figure out about where we need to make this thing. And we'll get some cuts made in here. Groovy. You know what we might do? We might just use a really big drill bit and just drill a, a nice round hole. Right there. Meh. Doesn't it go all the way through or anything crazy? It just needs to be. Yeah, I think that's the way we're gonna do that. All right, we'll be right back. Right here is that bolt I was telling you about, or nut, I should say, when I attached my adapter on there that I needed to cut that out on the inside so that way it fits over it and now it mounts flush. How about that? Not bad for a duck man, huh? <laughs> All right, excellent. And then the other one, of course, would go next to it over here. This is all just about ready to be uh, bolted in here. And then I gotta start cutting up this shaft and seeing how that's gonna work out. That's gonna be interesting. Probably gonna turn it on the lathe and see if I can get this shaft to fit inside of it. Wish I could broach a keyway on it. I don't have the tooling for that though, but that'd be great. Then I could just Stick a key in there and slide it right on and then put a screw in the end of it and be done with it. But anyway, it's not gonna work that way. We're gonna weld it and make it permanent. But the sprocket is still replaceable because it bolts on. See, ain't that great? All right, awesome. Well, here we go. On to the next step. And that is to get this thing disassembled. All right, disassembling the sprocket. Hope these come out easy. Well, that wasn't too bad. I thought for sure they were going to spin the sprocket and chew my hand up, but no, they didn't. There it is. All right. And this shaft has to be cut short. And then once it's cut short, then I need to hollow it out because it needs to slide over this shaft. Right here. And I brought this piece of wood out. Put this thing up on top of it and I didn't even do it. <laughs> yeah, I think I can do that. I don't know if I'll go all the way through it. I might just drill it out in the back here. And that way I have a nice groove on the inside so that way when I slot this in there I can fill it with a weld all the way around. And I might even cut a couple of slots in it too so that way I can fill it with weld in between almost like putting a pin in it. I might even put a pin in it. It might even be another option. But I'll lay it out, cut it all out, that way it'll be nice and round, so that way this shaft, 5 8 shaft, will slide inside of this one. And this, I think, is a 20 millimeter. Yeah. All right, well, there it is. This is should be hardened steel, and I'm surprised that when I cut this thing down on a lathe, um, it cuts real easy. <laughs> it's extremely soft. When I had to drill out that hole in the end of it there, when I broke that bolt off, man, it drilled out super, super easy. And I actually drilled it bigger and put a bigger tap in there and uh, run a bigger bolt. But none of that's necessary anymore because this was crap. So this is all going to go on here. And this is binding just a little bit. I think I'm going to have to loosen the bolts and just shimmy things around because it hasn't quite settled yet. I might have to fork it a couple times with a rubber mallet to make it happen. But, uh, yeah, we'll get it. What happened? You making chicken noises? You guys are about ready to go in. Yeah, it's going to start getting dark soon. <laughs> All right. And, of course, the sprocket's on the middle, and no, there's no keyway in it yet. We'll come back to that later. All right, let's see what we can do with this thing. say that turned out pretty good look at that I haven't welded it on yet but inside here inside the flange I did leave a little bit of a gap so that way I can fill it in with weld and what I'm going to do also is along the um, shaft keyway here 
Along the shaft keyway here, I'm gonna cut a slot into this, and I'm gonna stuff a key down in there and press it in, so that way I make sure this thing is extra straight and extra strong and extra tight, so that way the weld will just be to hold it on and not actually to stop it from turning, if you will. It'd be nice to have a nice hard uh, pin, essentially, to tie the two pieces together. So anyway, that's the goal here. It spins nice and straight. Our sprocket will go on this just like so, and it'll bolt right on. It'll fit just like it's factory. That's a winner. <laughs> All right, and this here is what our final assembly is going to look like. So we got a good mock-up on here. This is the wrong sprocket, of course. I still have one that's on the way. It'll probably arrive tomorrow. But by the time I finish this video, you guys will see it installed. But uh, here it is. Bearings are now spinning free. They were binding a little bit, but it was because, um, remember, these bearings will pivot. They will self-center. After playing with it enough, they self-centered. So before, they were a little cockeyed against each other. But the sprocket spins nice and true, which is what's important because you don't want to throw that chain. It also spins nice and true this way. It's not going up and down because you don't want that because when you're riding, it'll go, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Especially if it's off by, you know, a couple millimeters or something. You'll feel it. But that thing spins true, or at least true enough for government work, so that's going to work just fine. So this is pretty much ready to go. At this point, all that's left is I need to cut the end off of here and then get it all mounted up, mocked up, make sure the chain is nice and straight. I may have to machine off a little bit from here. You know what? I also need to weld the uh, shaft to the uh, sprocket carrier. I can't forget that. Or sprocket hub, I guess it is. Yeah, this is actually a hub, essentially. So I need to weld that on that shaft. I may have to machine the back of it just a little bit, or maybe I'll have to flip the bearing around because you notice the bearing is a little offset in there. So, depending upon how I need chain alignment. If I need more this way, it's real easy. Loosen it and slide the shaft over. If I need to go that way, however, I'm going to have to turn the bearing around. So, well, we'll see. I may have to machine this down a little bit, too, in case it doesn't clear right. But I think it's approximately in the spot it needs to be. Because this thing was pretty much centered on the shaft. Yeah, that's about right. Pretty much centered on the shaft. And then you can see the part that was exposed versus the part that was inside the seal. So that's where it would have sat. It was right about there. So I think that's actually dead nuts on where it's supposed to be. I think I could even loosen the bearing and push it inboard a little bit, but uh, I do have some options here to play with if I need to. There's a lot of... Uh, the way I've built this is a lot of customization or uh, adjustability that this cart, the KT-196, never had. Um, really, there was just... Yeah, just a lousy, lousy design on their part, mounting the jack shaft inside of this thing which can twist like I said even a stock engine will wrap these things up on bikes that uh, on go-karts that are affected by the problem and mine just happened to be one of them so anyway better than ever that's a fact look at that all right just a quick mock-up before I get everything welded together we got our chain on there connected to the hub which is connected to the new jack shaft that's in those bearings that you see right there there's a sprocket which is the wrong one but otherwise, this thing spins nice and freely. The gap in there, chain gap, looks pretty good. It's a little tighter on this side than that side, which means I could move that sprocket out a little bit so I could shift the entire jack shaft over just slightly. But otherwise, even if I left it alone, I think it'll be okay as is. Nice thing seeing that sprocket straight up and down because that thing was a problem before, a big problem. There's Biddy, the screamer. You've been screaming like an idiot for the past hour. I'm surprised that you stopped when I hit the record button. Yeah, you're actually being a good boy right this minute, huh? Can I pet you? Can I pet you? Can I pet you? Can I pet you? Ooh, he's gonna fight. I just wanna pet you, buddy. Let me pet you. Let me pet you. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> Sometimes he'll let me pet him. It's funny. He's like, he wants to fight, but he wants to play. Come here, come on. Come here, Petey. Come here, Petey. You're frilling out your neck. You look like a frilled lizard. <laughs> come here. Oh, oh, that was fighting. All right, now he's not playing anymore. You don't want anymore. Here comes Boomer. What are you doing, Boomer? You gonna come protect your daddy? Probably not, huh? The Biddy Monster's over here. Right, Biddy Monster? Right, Biddy Monster? All right, you go play somewhere. These two are over here. They like to make a nest underneath the barbecue grill. No, Biddy. No, Biddy. That was bad. That's not playing. That was attacking. Probably just wants my shoe. No, he didn't. I thought he would go after it. But Boomer did, because Boomer's a pervert. Right, Boom? Yeah, see? See what I'm talking about? Look what he does to my shoes. Defiles my shoes. 
<laughs> in fact, if I give one of them to Biddy, he'll probably defile it himself. He's got a thing about shoes also. Yeah, get him, Biddy. You don't want the shoe? Well, no, Boomer's going to town over there. You see what I mean? She was his girlfriend. <laughs> Biddy's laughing at you. Yeah, but Biddy does the same thing you do. In fact, he's gonna steal your shoe. Watch this, he's gonna come over there, he's gonna steal your shoe. I know he's gonna do it. Get him, Biddy. Get him, Biddy. Uh-oh, <laughs> Boomer ran away, because he knows. Boomer knows. When I say that, that means the chicken's gonna go after him. <laughs> All right, look, Biddy's getting his time. Uh, what the hell's your problem there, Icebox? Whoa, Zoom. Zoom Zoom was all messed up. Yeah, I gotta put my shoes back on now. <laughs> all right, shoved it back in the lathe to check for straightness one more time after I welded it. And let's just see what we got. Well, would you look at that. Still pretty damn true. Well, it's got a tiny little bit of run out, but I mean, it's so little that you'd never notice it. All right, well, we're good to go. All right, I'm gonna just clean that up a little bit, get some of the ugly blobs off so that way it looks like a more machined surface. I also have to make sure it has a nice square cut on the end of it so that way it mates up against the bearing just fine. And then uh, we're ready to mount this thing up on the vehicle. And well, you know, I'm gonna drill and put a pin in it too. I think I've decided that I'm just gonna run just a drill bit right through it and then probably use an old drill bit <laughs> as a pin to shove it in there. I, I don't know, probably not. I'm just talking through my ass. But yeah, I am going to drill a hole and put a pin in it. So we just want to have that a little stiffer than what it is. I'm not going to pretend that the welds are going to hold up forever on this thing because I've seen these type of things just, they let go. They just do. So okay, anyway, overall, we'll pin it. I would say that everything looks pretty good over here. Chain alignment is on par. We're good. The only trouble I have is when I spin this sometimes. There it is, you can hear it. You get a little ping ping. Once in a while, the chain will deflect just a little bit and it will actually hit the back side of the, uh, the uh, secondary pulley here. And I know some spots, the rivets stick up in the chains. It's a cheap chain, a little higher than others. But I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the uh, secondary pulley out here and I'm just gonna take a millimeter or two off the back of it. In addition, I might slip another washer in there just to give it a little more space. Otherwise, chain alignment's good, and I really don't want to mess with that. But I built this so so it's adjustable, right? So anything can be played with or adjusted. But anyway, whoop, there it is. Really bad right there. It's unusual, though, because you can't see it when it happens. Oh, I know what it is. There's little rivets on the back side of the pulley there. Yeah, they're hitting the chain. Okay, yeah, I can fix that. We'll take it out, and as I said, I'll take a millimeter or two off of the outside or inside of the pulley here, and then I'll just nick those rivets down to get the uh, little heads on them flat instead of rounded as they are. That's what it's hitting. Okay, well, we'll fix that. Right, no big here deal. We are. Now we are drilled for a pin. You can see the light through it. In fact, you can see Biddy right through it. Look at him. There it is, a Biddy target. <laughs> Anyway, I gotta find a pin that'll fit in there. I should have found the pin before I drilled the hole. But anyway, yeah, I've got something that'll fit in there, I'm sure. So we'll stuff that on in there, and then maybe we'll just tack a little weld on each end for good luck. Sounds good to me. And you just came over here to cause mischief. I saw you sneaking up on me. You were about to tack my legs under the table, weren't you? Yeah, you dick chicken. I pressed one pin in there. I actually just hammered the shit out of it until it's in, and it's in now. It, uh, it's tough, and I cut it off on that side. I'm going to, uh, like I said, put a little weld on each side just for good luck to make sure the pin doesn't come out, although I, I don't think it's going anywhere. I probably don't even need to do that. But I'm going to do it anyway. And then uh, we'll throw it in the lathe, round it up one more time, just again for good luck, make it look nice, and then we're installing the thing once and for all. Hopefully my sprocket comes in today. All right, well, there we are. We got our ends welded in for good luck. As we said, I'm going to throw it in the lathe and just clean it up real quick, and then uh, we'll install it. That's ready to go. <laughs> I see you over there. I see you over there. Why is my camera not focusing? Come on, focus on that stupid bird. There he is. Still won't focus on him. What the hell's the matter with this camera? He's making faces at me. He was making fun of me. He's taunting me. <laughs> Finalized shaft with welding and pins and all that good stuff shoved in there. I'm going to put this right where she belongs 
These things are properly aligned now, so this thing goes in quite easily. Uh, make sure I don't have the groove going in the screw holes. <laughs> you don't want it to go in where the screws go, otherwise you're going to have a problem. And then it'll just be a bad day. Biddy's coming over to attack me. What a jerk. Here, just like this. Alright. Now I can't get that on here. Why? Let's see here. Not bad. Run our screws in. cross-threaded on those two. They should have buzzed right in. And they didn't. That's good. Yeah, that was it. Alright. Good. One more. Yay. Alright. Here we are. The chain appears to clear everything. I don't hear any more of this kind of stuff. When I was spinning it, that was a problem that we had. The shaving off that little bit off the back of it was good, and I can still bring that in just a little bit. I thought I heard it for a second. In fact, I'm sure I heard it for a second, but I don't think it was the chain that time. In fact, the chain's not even tight right now because we moved the engine. So if we go like that, that tighten the chain up. Of course, the engine's not bolted down tight, but there it is. All right, that looks good. Just waiting on my... Oh, wait a minute. I'm hearing that shit again. Oh, I see what happened. Let's see. Am I right? Yes, I am right. The whole engine is cockeyed. Remember, I built this on adjusters so I can adjust it. And... That was exactly what it was. The engine was just too close to the chain which is causing it to, uh... Yeah, okay, now we got a ton of clearance. Is it straight? No, it's not quite straight. The engine has to go over, or the sprocket has to come over. <laughs> Being the sprocket's adjustable now, it actually makes life a lot easier. The engine's still not quite in alignment. Anyway, we'll work that out. Otherwise, I'm pretty confident that this is good. It's just a chain adjustment thing right now. Yeah, here I'm jingling. It's all loose, so anyway, I gotta play with that. No big deal. We'll get it. We shaved down just a millimeter or so off of this, and then we clipped off the rounded heads on these rivets here, so they're flat now. Didn't want to go too overboard on this because this is actually, this lip here provides the rigidity of the backside of this pulley. And these rivets, well, if you cut them too much, the whole thing is gonna come apart, and that's not what we want. So, this thing is ready to go back on here, just like that, and I need a little bit of brake cleaner to clean up the pulleys, but now everything spins freely, our chain is properly tensioned, I don't hear any more ring-a-ding-a-jingling stuff anymore, I guess that did the trick. Alright, well fantastic. Well, that means all I need is a sprocket for down below, and then this sucker is ready to be mounted. So, we're waiting on the UPS man. <laughs> Always. And they'll probably screw it up, too. Watch. And that's exactly what they did. And not only did it show up a couple days late, but when the package showed up, it was completely empty. It had busted open and got lost somewhere, so I had to reorder it. Frustrating as it was, that's why this video was so delayed. Well, my sprocket finally arrived, but, uh, yeah, um... A little flooded out here. <laughs> Incredible it's coming down like it is. Here comes Boomer. Come on, Boomer. They say it's a fine day for a duck, but ducks usually disagree, or at least mine do anyway. I don't know why he's outside. Come here, buddy. Why are you out here? Come here. Come on inside. It's not raining inside. Well, I got the engine covered up there. I threw a bin over it real quickly. You can see I raked off the roof also because pine needles can cause uh, dams on the roof and make roof leaks, so I'm pretty good about getting that stuff down. But anyway, I just raked it down before it started raining. I had to run inside. <laughs> just
just timing was coincidental. I was going to do it this morning anyway. But yeah, um, we're going to be a little bit delayed before I can get this sprocket installed and put that engine back in that cart. Right, McBoom? What are you doing, Mr. McBoomster, huh? You drinking all that fresh water out there? I can't believe it's outside. I really can't. Now, he was hiding in the shelter over there, but he's coming through the back door. I leave it open for him when it's like this. The chickens are all inside. I couldn't put them out this morning. It was, uh, it was too awful. But anyway, I digress. We'll get back on project as soon as it stops raining. And man, this is a bad one, too. This is not expected to go away for the next few hours, and it's actually expected to get worse. So, I guess we'll see. Thanks, Boomer! <laughs> hey, welcome back, everybody. After the huge rainstorm we had here, and, uh... <laughs> kid you not, yesterday was some of the worst rain I think I've seen in about 10 years. Pretty severe and only lasted a few hours, but I mean, it's a few hours enough. I mean, we got four inches of rain in a very short period of time, and I mean, it just it came down. Anyway, we're back and we're gonna be working on the jack shaft on this thing and try to get finalized. <laughs> so now we've got some parts. Thanks, Amazon. <laughs> All right, there's the engine. Here's the tools we're getting set up with today. This is the sprocket that took two weeks to get here because, well, you know what happened. Amazon lost it! Yeah, they sent me a package with nothing in it. Thanks, guys. Anyway, I had to do a uh, reorder on it, and it finally arrived. But, I mean, this one didn't get delayed either, which is really nice. But, anyway, it actually arrived in 48 hours like it was supposed to. So, what we got to do is we got to take this sprocket off, and we got to get the jack shaft out of there. I can see a lot of rust on here from the rain having spattered up underneath that tote. Yeah, see the chain is all rusty. I hadn't even gotten a chance to lube this chain yet. If I did, it probably would have never rusted at all. All right, that comes out. Get that out the way. And then our jack shaft hopefully will come out. Hopefully this didn't rust. This rusted, we're in trouble. Oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, it rusted a little bit. It's something I'm gonna have to either treat or paint or something. Phosphoric acid might be good too, but the shaft, I can't let it get bigger, and phosphoric acid when it puts the coating on there will actually expand it a little bit. So it won't wanna push in where it's supposed to go. Anyway, here it is. This sprocket's gonna go on here, but not until after it goes through the first side here. So let's start putting this thing together and make this thing final once and for all. Sorry, I bumped the camera there. Alright, this sprocket in the center here has some adjustability on it, so I can slide it back and forth because I'm not sure what the chain alignment's supposed to be. I think it's supposed to be right about where it's at. I need two hands to actually move it. Well, I guess not. I can do it with one. But I made the key long enough that I can slide it back and forth on the key, and also more key means it's less likely to strip out, as we experienced before, the key would split. But this is the piece that came off of here, and then the sprocket would usually just shit shit. Yeah, that's what it does. It shits off to the right. But it would just normally sit off to the right slightly from where it's at, so it might come over just a little bit more. And if I'm wrong, then I have to turn the sprocket around and figure out what I'm going to do, or maybe even machine it down a little bit, or reverse this bearing, because this bearing might be pushed out too far. I wanted the grease zerks towards the back, so that way they're easy to get to. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty close. Pretty close. I think it should be just about where it needs to be. And the way that I had everything set up, the sprocket actually needed to be aligned a little more to the left anyway. So anyway, I think that's what we're going to go with. Let's start snugging some things up and let's throw it in the cart and see what it looks like. Okay. 
in. Well, I see our first glitch already here. It's a minor one, but it's still something that needs to be addressed. All right, let me show you. Down under here, you can see my new jack shaft right there. And when I try to drop the engine down to the bolt hole where it's supposed to go, the jack shaft hits the disc. Minor, minor oversight there. Um, I guess really all I need to do is just put a mark on it and cut the damn thing off. <laughs> That means I gotta pull the engine back out, or at least remove the jack shaft, but I really don't want to do either. But we're gonna have to if we want to get this done. So, uh, yeah, I guess we'll uh, start by pulling the engine back out, cutting the damn thing off, and we'll reassemble it and get back to this point. Here we go. I'd like to note that we probably won't have any clearance with the bearing, nor with the pillow bearing mount on this side. However, the block right there where the bolt goes in, and on the back side here, I may have to shave that down because that gets really close to the disc. So I may have to come out with the angle grinder and just take a, I don't know, an eighth of an inch or something off just to ensure that it clears the disc. If the disc should ever get warped, it may hit it and may completely clear it. Of course, the engine is, well, it's not even shifted as far left as it's supposed to be. But that could become a problem because you see it's pretty close. So anyway, let's take this thing apart. One hour later. Right back to where we left off at. Now, looking under here, look at how close the clearance is on that brake disc. We got a half an inch from the pillow block right up here <laughs> to uh, well, a little bit more than that, maybe a, not even quite a quarter of an inch between that and the actual jack shaft itself. So, man, they are close, but that disc doesn't deflect. And I suppose that if it did get that warped, that I'll be replacing a disc anyway. That would be a really odd circumstance for that to happen. The engine, however, is uh, not quite put into its position yet. I don't know if I'm gonna have to go up or down. Um, it depends on how tight I get that chain. And speaking of the chain, look in there at the sprockets. You can see that they are perfectly aligned. And I mean perfectly aligned. That worked out really, really nicely. So I guess all that's left here is to put that chain on, reconnect the electric throttle and uh, fuel line. This sucker's ready for a ride. Far out. All right, the roll test. This thing was always impossible to roll before and you would hear the chains chunk away. Chains are silent now. The squeaking you hear is the front suspension. The bushings up there are just noisy, but it rolls with like no effort. Less rolling resistance means, well, better performance and higher top speed. And looking at the chains here, everything's rolling nice and straight. I think we should be good to go. I don't see why not. Let's get the rest of the engine connected and get this thing ready to go. Because it's drive time, guys. Now on these belts, there's a bevel on one side. And in the last video, uh, I demonstrated putting it on. And actually, I put it on backwards. I actually put it on backwards, even though I demonstrated the correct side that it should be. Because the arrows that were printed on the belt were printed in the wrong direction. The bevel should be on the beveled side of the pulley, so it should be towards me. The flat side should be towards the engine. I did turn it around in the last video because the arrows said to, and well, that was wrong. So I had one viewer point that out to me, and I'm very, very thankful for it. Hey, the duck man was wrong for once because, well, the Chinese guy that printed these belts out did it incorrectly and I followed the instructions instead of observing the actual shape of the belt. Anyway, this sucker is ready to go on, so... Alright, well we got the belt on, so we're good to go, but that sucker is tight. But I did manage to get it on by rolling the cart forwards and back. Um, she's ready to start at this point, but I do not have the throttle linkage hooked up because I'm missing one of the little clamps that holds this all together. And what that's going to mean is that I may not leave this carburetor on here and I may just upgrade it to uh, a different one. HIPAA carburetor is great, but it, it's just, uh, I'm missing a bunch of linkage for this thing. And, well, 
it's not going to work correctly with the incorrect linkage if I don't have the correct clamps to put it together. And I'm not going to put more money into going back, and I'm not going to put more money into going backwards when I'm ready to go forwards with an upgraded carburetor, exhaust, and a whole bunch of other things. So, yeah, we might just take a pause on this, but um, yeah, let's see what I can come up with. If I can find it, we'll hook it back up. If not, if not, we'll put the upgraded carburetor on, which I already have. So, let's get into it. Here we go. Meanwhile, just for grins, let's go ahead and start it up. Shit. This is just something that I rigged up to try to get it to work, but see how this lever pulls this rod, which pulls this lever, right here, which pulls that rod out of the carburetor, so this is what it did. And the other trouble was, is that it's very, very short pull from here to here. That's it. That's all the motion the throttle has. But this opens and closes the throttle fully in that short of a motion. So it's, it's practically impossible to get like a half throttle, a quarter throttle. It's either wide open or none. As you see, it just that's all it does. It just slams open. So that wouldn't have been a problem if I had the original linkage. But this engine, you remember, it was a second-hand engine that came off of, well, it came off of that cart right here. And uh, when I took it off of there, it, it, it's missing stuff. It had its own problems. And most of the problems were on the outside because it seems to run and it sounds just fine. Makes power, runs good. But yeah. We're just gonna go ahead and swap out that carburetor. Otherwise, that HIPAA carburetor runs like a top. I mean, it's perfect on there, it's pre-tuned. Uh, you don't really need to do anything, and I'm not just saying that to save face. I just wanna make sure that everybody understands that the only reason it's coming off is because that linkage sucks. And I could probably go to Harbor Freight and get a whole new linkage apparatus to put on the top. I mean, I might even be able to find something else on Amazon or some stuff too, but uh, I don't wanna replace that and spend more money on that because that is not what's gonna stay on here. We're about to do some performance work on this engine and give this thing a little more balls, which means that 30 series um, CVT that's on here, we're probably gonna exceed the limit on it. It says the max limit's for eight horsepower. This is an eight horsepower engine. So yeah, we're right at the limit. So anything I do is gonna push it over the top and well, I guess we'll just see how long that lasts. If it blows that f up, then we'll replace it with a 40 series, which means I'm probably gonna have to redo the chain and stuff and play with the alignment of things and there's going to be a little bit of this and that that's going to go into it but it shouldn't be too big of a deal but anyway yeah let's get that carburetor updated on let's go ahead and replace that carburetor on this thing and uh let's take it for a test drive i really want to feel how these sprockets and new jack shaft is going to work on here because i suspect it's uh it's going to be solid should be good to go as long as nothing rubs i don't think it will i think everything's going to be good all right there it is yes very happy i'm saving this for the next video it looks like we're going to do it a little prematurely here on account of having throttle cable issues. The throttle cable that I have is meant for a slide style carburetor and not for the linkages that would ordinarily come on one of these. Oh, I forgot. There's a bolt up on top here too that's going to come out. Ouch. Oh, come on. Really? One of those ones you gotta be a contortionist to get it out of there. <laughs> All right, get that out. I'll slide this off. There we go. Fuel line is already drained. We have our linkage right here. Comes out, and this carburetor's off. That's all there was to it. Let me get much easier than that. All right. As far as the new carburetor is concerned. 
I'm gonna need to get these studs off of here first. I did that the wrong way. And I need to do it this way. This is a box end wrench. Never done this before. You just simply turn the stud out. Loose enough, it should come right out. There it is. Separate our nuts from here again. Now I split that gasket too bad. All right, we got a new one. All right, put our wrench back on again. Almost looks like I've done this before. <laughs> there it is. Okay. In the package for this little manifold was a new gasket and a prophylactic spacer, which I guess is, yeah, we'll have to take this one off because the stock one is extremely limiting. Look at the size of the hole in there. Big difference. Why are the chickens fighting? Every time I turn around, the little bastards are on each other. Love you guys so much, but you guys are such jerks. <laughs> All right. That, I think, goes on here just like that. Unless I'm wrong, maybe this goes on first. You know, actually, the best way to make this work is to port match it. Just that actually goes on the other side just judging by the shape of these things because this is the same shape as the intake or the outlet I should say on the carburetor so that's gonna be set up that way okay there's a gasket here already so we're gonna leave that as is this goes on I believe this way and yeah, that looks right All right. That prophylactic spacer, as I said, can't go back on because it's going to be too restrictive. That jet is really low and flying in the wrong direction. Why are you going 90 degrees off from everything else? It didn't sound too good either. I don't know what's going on there, but I'm not a pilot. If I were a pilot, I wouldn't be here right now working on things on the ground. All right, guys? Okay, how does that go on? I believe it's this way. That's not right. No. Now the holes are different sizes, so the bolts only go on one way. Clever. Clever girl. <laughs> Clever girl. <laughs> oh, look at that. The Allen key doesn't turn inside of these because they reduce the size of them. That's all right. They included a different tool here in the package. And no prophylactic spacer here. Instead, they, um, they want one on the outside, the one that they included here for the carburetor, which is fine. Okay. Here's the other bolt. And here. the key that they gave me which fits in there terribly how did they expect me to use that I can't do it that way <laughs> oh wow the only way I can figure that's gonna work is if I cut about a quarter inch off of it and I get it into this one yeah barely Barely. Even now I can't get the tool out when I turn it. Okay, I gotta cut that down. It's too big. And this one won't, won't turn in here, so I can't use my tool on it because it wedges itself in. All right, how stupid is that? <laughs> Let's make some changes to this. We'll make it work. All right, ground that down about a quarter of an inch. I think that'll get it. Ooh, that's close. 
Yeah, that'll get it. All right, tighten that down. Why did that engine look like it's loose? Gonna have to evaluate that, but I think it's just the rubber bushings at the end. That may not be loose at all. Okay, we'll get this bolt also. Tighten him up. So much for getting a torque spec on this, because you're not going to. <laughs> Alright, that's good. We've got a gasket for this side. Or is it this gasket? Yeah, this gasket. This one's going to go on here, like that. And then the engine, or the carburetor rather, has an O-ring on it. So that will go on the outside. And it comes with these... And I hate these damn things. These cap head screws, crack head screws as I've been calling them, just are aggravating as hell to me. That's how these things all connect. That's the hardware that comes with it. And it's one of those things I'd like to be able to set it and forget it, so hopefully when I get this thing on, I won't be taking it off very often. Seeing as how the carburetor is in a very accessible spot, if I have to do any tuning to it, don't have to tear the engine all apart to get to it. Alright, carver duder goes right on here just like that. And then it came with, well I thought it did, but it came with two nuts. Now, apparently it did not. Hopefully the two nuts that came off of here will fit. they do or not. <laughs> this is going to be frustrating, isn't it? No, they do fit. Okay, why was I having an issue then? Might have something to do with this uh, prophylactic spacer being too short and the bolts being, or too long, rather too thick and the uh, bolts being too short. If that's the case, then it goes away. No, it got it. Okay, it went in. Boy, barely. Okay. Alright. Hope I can get the tool on the back side of these things. Probably not. <laughs> no, it went. All right. Get the sucker snugged up. I don't think I'm getting a tool in the other one. <laughs> yeah. Not a friggin' chance. Absolutely not. <laughs> and even if I cut the thing down, because you see it's tapered, it shrinks down to a smaller size. Even if I cut it down, then it, there's no way in hell it would even get in the bolt. But let me show you what's going on here. This is, this is one of those shitty designs. Oh, man. All right, you guys, look at this. See that right here? One bolt right against the other one. There is just no way to get a tool in between them. Won't fit. So what I'll have to do is I'll have to either get another Allen key that I have and cut it way down that'll fit, or I'll just have to put a hex-headed bolt on there, which is probably the smartest answer, and get rid of the stupid shit that they gave me. All right, well, we'll fix that. You in the peanut gallery, they want to tell me, you know, instead of trying to put the bolt through this way, try putting it through the other way. And I already did that before I started. It won't go. It hits the, uh, the actual casting of the carburetor itself. And if I... I got that stuck. If I try to come through on the other side, same thing. In fact, it's even worse. Now, what I might be able to do is maybe wallow out these holes just a little bit. And that's an option. And then maybe it'll go 
in just like that. In fact, that one I could probably force it, but you know what, I'm gonna do that. Let's do that. Because then I can attack these sides with the Allen key and the other side I could just use a 10 millimeter wrench, so that makes sense. All right, wallering was the answer. Because look at that. There we go, bolt goes right in. I didn't even have to do much to it. I mean, a fraction of a millimeter on here. I just put a drill bit right in there and then just pivoted just a little bit and took a little meat off of it. Can't even tell for looking at it, so it should work just fine. All right, go put these things in the opposite direction because there was no other way that this is going to work. Put the bolts in this way. It's getting dark out here. I think it's about to rain again. Man, this is a. Uh, <laughs> The time of the year right here in Pensacola, being the second rainiest city in all of the United States. Well, continental anyway. I think Hawaii actually rains a lot more, but here, Pensacola, the only city that's rainier is Mobile proper, and Mobile is less than an hour from here. There it goes. All right, that looks much more promising. Okay, here we go. See if we can get this on here before it's about to start raining again. Oh, now look at that. Now I can't get my box end wrench on here because I'm gonna have to use an open-ended. The bolts are too close to the manifold that I can't get the bolt around the head completely. Yep, can't do it. All right, get a different right, tool. Open-ended wrench for the wind. <laughs> what did I do with the Allen key that I had out here earlier? Oh, I lost it. I bet you I went inside with it. Oh, no, it's right here. I didn't see it. The blind is a damn bat. I'll tell you what, guys, it's getting dark out here. Yeah, this is uh, not a good sign for the weather. Just trying to get this on here so I get this thing running to finish this video up. Hi, Cheeky. Came around to see Daddy, huh? She's behind the camera right now. Cheeky's such a good little chicken. She sure loves her Daddy, but she also knows that her Daddy gives her ice cream. Yeah, you looked right at me when I said ice cream. <laughs> yeah, you know what you like. Want ice cream, huh? Want it? Well, yum yum, hmm? Hoping she'd make a noise, but she's pretty quiet most of the time, unless I'm away from her. If I'm away from her, she'll, uh, she'll. You probably heard that. That was a little one she gave me. Come on, bolt. Both are sliding off the head. Cheap china bolts, my Craftsman tool, is harder than the bolt in question here. Not a surprise, I guess. You know what, I can't get the, the wrench on there any better than that. Yeah, that's it. That's how tight it's gonna be. Now here's the problem. This throttle cable here, I set this up for a slide-style carburetor, which is exactly what this is. And I might have to loosen this up because this is a was formerly on a 22, and this is a 30. So the slide is gonna be a little bigger, which means it's gonna have a little more motion in it. So it's gonna need a little more cable to be pulled out of the end here. There we go. Also inside of here, I'm gonna have to check the clip on the slide, on the needle here, if I can get the thing out. There we go. Oops. Yeah, it's all the way down on the bottom. Typically, at this level here, sea level, I usually want it up one from there. <laughs> These china carbs, you never can tell what they're set at because they just put stuff in them. 
Alright, I got a third one from the top. We're probably going to have to uh, come back and adjust that later. I got a 115 uh, jet in here, by the way, for those of you that are wondering. And I have a 42 pilot jet. The pilot jet might be a little big. I'm probably going to need something more like a 40 in here. But the... What's going on here? I have too many boots. Oh, this is the boot from the old cable, or old, uh, yeah, the old carburetor. Well, we're just going to keep that on here then. Oh, and look at that. I'm going to have to waller this out now, too, because the little crown doesn't fit on that cable. And I think I remember experiencing that on the, uh, on the other cable also that I put on here. So, okay. Well, we're going to have to fix that then, aren't we? <laughs> Let me come back. Wait. Hope I get this together before it rains. All right, here we go. Considering all the booming and how dark it got, it actually isn't raining quite so bad. It's still raining, though. What are you doing, Boomer? There he is. He's over there mooching off the chickens. I need to build him a proper coop over there. And it's just a shanty, like something you'd see in a... <laughs> some movie. <laughs> anyway, it keeps them dry and they're good, and all my lumber is over there, so we'll build a, a proper chicken hut down the road. Got a whole bunch of new fence patches, too. So, anyway. Yeah, a fence blew down over there. Big chunk of fence blew down uh, from a storm uh, several weeks ago. I had to fix that. Thankfully, I had spare pieces to add some new and additional fence. So I got all that patched back together. It's kind of ugly over there, but it's behind the shed and stuff. You really will see it. Anyway. Hey, no, boom! Playing in the, the puddle and the tarp there. I don't need that tarp. There's a whole bunch of plywood. You know the price of that stuff anymore. Don't need to get that wet. <laughs> Not much of a surprise. There's Cheeky coming over here to join Daddy. Hey, Biddy. You be in trouble? Yeah, you guys are free. Now you're out here eating all the worms and the wet dirt. Well, anyway, we got this thing started, which you didn't get to see on camera, but uh, I fired it up just a little while ago, and no sooner I did, everybody in the neighborhood started running their lawnmowers, so I guess I cued them off. I think I hear about three different mowers running right now, if you listen closely. String trimmer, two mowers. <laughs> anyway, we got as far as installing the carburetor on this thing because we knew we were having trouble with the throttle linkage on it. Linkage was a complete disaster. HIPAA carburetor, thumbs up, tuned perfectly. This thing, not tuned so good. But the throttle cable that I have on here is set up for it without needing any additional weird linkage that was missing. See, this stuff is from the KT196. It's not even right for the 301 engine, so it doesn't even fit right. So yeah, anyway, that's all going away. This carburetor's on here. I put a 115 main jet in it, and I think it's too small. And here's why. I'll show you. I think the low jetting is probably good because that seems to be fine. But if I go and I floor it, yeah, the engine will bog down to nothing, which tells me it's too lean. It could also be too rich, but it's a 115 jet that's in their main. I've seen them go up to 130, 135 even at sea level. I started small, so we're going to go bigger. Um, that's a pretty big bog right there, so let's push right to a 130 and let's see what happens. Turn off in an attempt to run it dry. It's amazing how much fuel remains in these carburetors even after you do that though, so well, let's see what happens. You guys missed it. Just before I hit the record button, we got a loud clash of thunder. So yeah, it's about to start raining again. Yeah, pulling this bowl off. It's only three screws to get to it. You don't have to remove the entire carburetor. One of the beauties of the setup on this thing. Yeah, it's gonna rain again. <laughs> it's in the forecast, there was supposed to be a car cruise today, and I think everybody went on it, but I didn't. If there's any any chance of just bad rain, I just don't drive. And I've got a bus and two squarebacks and a 350Z all blocking me in anyway, so I didn't want to deal with it. But that's how much fuel remains in the uh, bowl, even after the thing has uh, stalled out. So, kind of a surprise that they hold so much, even though they run themselves dry. Alright, the jet in here is a 115. I put it in myself. The factory jet that comes with these things, they never have a size printed on them. <clears throat> Leave it to the Chinese engineers to do that stuff, but that's just the way they did it. Got my 
might need a better screwdriver. This one doesn't seem to be biting. All right, All right we'll be right back. In here now. Let's see if the jet comes out, or if it takes the whole emotion. Yeah, it took the whole emotion tube out with it, which is what I didn't want to have happen, but it did it anyway. All right, which means I'm going to need a wrench also. But as I said, the stock jets do not have any sizes printed on them. They'd leave you just to guess, and they always run way too lean. But this one is a 115. This is one I had in one of my jetting kits. You could barely read the number on there because these are stamped so poorly. And it has nothing to do with my eyes being old. I'm actually 45 years old and don't need glasses, which is amazing. 40 is that magic number. I don't think I'll make it quite to 50, though, because my eyes are slow to focus, but that's another sto story altogether. The fact is, when they do focus, I see just fine. So, anyway... Just what happens when you get older, guys. <laughs> well, I need a wrench for this, and we'll drop that jet out of there. And I have a jet kit that came that I never got to open in my mail call Monday. But these are all the jets for this carburetor, and there's some really, really big, wild sizes in here. This came from one of my friends and fans, Willie Oberman, and, and I'm so thankful for him. He sent me a lot of nice stuff. I think he sent me the carburetor and also the air cleaner. Uh, the manifold I think I bought myself, but nonetheless, I mean, I think this entire apparatus is from him. And these are all the jets that were on my wish list. And yes, I do have a wish list. You can check it out at duckshit.net if you'd like to help support some of the things that I do. Anything that's on there that's been purchased disappears from the list. If you'd like to help me out, it does help me to build things a little faster around here. So whatever it's worth, um, we can get some stuff done a little more quickly. All right, well, let's take this apart. Chicken shits are screaming again because I hear my voice. <laughs> They know my voice quite well. All right, here we go. Take the 115 out. Now I gotta find the 130 in this kit. The nice thing about the kits that I, these jets rather, that I got from a Willie here is that I can actually read them easily because they're printed so well. That one's too small. That's a 100. Yeah, I mean, these are remarkably easy to read. 105. I should be throwing these into a different bin. 88. When you hit 88, you're going to see some serious shit. That's a 150. That's a big jet. I don't think we need to go quite that big. Maybe if I put a 420 on this or something, but I don't want to put an engine on there that big. I think a 420 is a little excessive. However, if somebody funds me with a 420 engine and tells me, hey, Duckman, you got to mount this, I'll do it. I'll do it. I just don't have any interest in putting such a big engine on here, although I think, based on the mounting patterns in the hulls, I might be able to make it fit with minimal work. There's a 130. And as I said, that jet needs to go up more than just one, one or two sizes because it's incredibly lean when you step on that throttle. And I have run 120s on the Doodle Bastard, which uses the same carb, but the Doodle Bastard is a smaller engine. It's only 200cc, so therefore it draws less air, which means you need a smaller jet, typically. But it does rev higher, so I guess in the end you get more CFM flowing through it, but the 120 in that seems to be pretty happy, but I am going to experiment with that in the future to see if we can get it to anything more out of it than what we have. Although, you really don't need more out of that little bike with such a big engine. Okay, here we go. And this is not the final jetting in here, I mean, unless it runs friggin' perfect, which it might, but I'll probably end up playing with this some more. Let me put our bolt back on. Ooh, there's a jet on the ground here I dropped and I didn't see it. It's so much easier than changing the jets on the Ninja 250. That's an all-day affair. Whew. You take everything on the bike apart just to get to them. Well, in the stock setup anyway. I made some mods to mine. Our fuel back on up here. Back on, flowing, flowing. Fantastic. Let's start it back up. 
And let's see how she behaves with a 130 main jet. Oh, one pull was nice. Here we go. Remove the 130. We got 140 in there now. We got thunder overhead. A couple raindrops hitting me. Let's see if I can get this thing running properly before it starts to rain again. <laughs> Going from a 140 to a 150. <laughs> this, as I said before, is now officially the biggest jet I've ever put into a PZ30 carburetor. And I hope it's big enough. I don't see why I should have to put such a big jet in here, but I don't know. <clears throat> Maybe something's wrong that I'm not observing. Maybe I'm making a mistake somewhere. Hopefully, this will make it run better. The throttle response is pretty. Pretty laggy. There's no accelerator pumps on these. I guess you shouldn't be surprised in the least. But I should be able to floor it. And it should, <clears throat> even if it pauses just for a second, a slight, not a hesitation, but like a pause. Maybe hesitation is the right word. <laughs> All right, and the fuel back on. Of course, all the chickens got to come up behind me now while I'm recording. And here's the thunder again. That sounded directly overhead that time. Yeah. Some of that nice horizontal lightning. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Let's try this again. Alright. Hey, Cheeky. Watch out. We're making noise.
chain's not adjusted quite properly. I need to make an adjustment on that before we go any further. Yep, weather map looks like crap, so that means I'm gonna take this cart, shove it in that shed, round up the birds, and uh, we're gonna finish this in another video. But the fact is, the jack shaft seems to be working. I just need to get the uh, chain snugged up because in my final installation of it, when I took everything apart, I actually did not adjust the chain on it. So I'll get that set up there, and, and it should be fine. I don't see why not. I mean, nothing blew up or exploded, but I also haven't given it a real good beating yet, but we'll get to that. So for now, licky, likey, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to pluck the dingle bellies. Get updates every time I upload a video. Check out DuckShit.net for all my different social media links. Don't forget, I've got a wish list up on DuckShit.net. Go ahead, Boomer, make a duck shit. <laughs> 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 so thanks for watching and have yourselves a great day we'll be back next week a little more go-kart stuff and uh a lot more volkswagen stuff man that thunder because i got all these cars over here we'll just take a real quick lap around here let me just show you look we got the bus here here we go bus we got this square back which you know about already my square back which is gonna go up on this chassis. Still trying to figure out some timing on that. Trying to catch a possum here that's been some trouble. And we got this beautiful square back, which is going to be receiving some suspension and engine work. We got that coming up soon. And then you know Big Blue. So anyway, I gotta consolidate and move some things around. I got too much stuff up here. It's impossible for me to remove my own stuff from the yard. Gee, I can't even get the go-kart out unless I lift it over the fence. But <laughs> anyway, I guess that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time where the jack shaft mounts on. And this little piece right here, when the engine pulls on it, it flexes it way every single friggin' time. <sighs> One inch squared.